about radio. Uh, this is my uh, two element beam uh, that I made for 20 meters and uh, I, I looked at the last video that I made uh, back in 2011 that's the last video uh, uh, about this uh, antenna and I said I'd talk a bit more about the gamma matching unit and I, uh, I realized that uh, I haven't actually got round to doing that so uh, I'm just setting it up now I haven't used it for a little while but it, it's been outside and I'm, I'm just going to check the connections on it as uh, I used uh, a mixture of copper and aluminium. I put some uh, Vaseline petroleum jelly on the uh, joints but I'm just going to open it up and see what it looks like after two years of being outside uh, in a, uh, a, a sea salty uh, environment uh, which we have here. So it hasn't been up in the air but it, it's been lying on the ground and uh, that uh, gamma section has been very close to the floor well it's been on the floor so it's been damp and uh, well soaking wet most of the year uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can feed an antenna but i chose to use this uh, gamma rod um, because it saves actually splitting the um, uh, that central element uh, there, that main element. So um, the, the dipole, the, the dimensions are in the uh, previous uh, video. I'll put a link in the show more box to that. Um, so that's uh, the the driven element, and then the uh, the other element is uh, shorter. It's um, a, a director. Anyway, uh, the gamma is connected. Uh, to there, uh, that uh, little bit of uh, green, white, green, and yellow wire uh, connects to the screen of the coax. You'll see I've got the coax uh, pointing down, or when the aerial's the right way up, it's pointing down so any rain sort of drips out of it. And then the uh, center of the coax is connected to the bottom rod. I'll get in close and show you those. So what I've got here is the, uh, the coax. Let's say uh, this is uh, up in the air and, and this is the direction of the ground um, and uh, what I've done was opened up the, uh, the coax, separated the screen out of it so uh, and then I've put some uh, green sleeving over there and what I've done I've forced Evo stick it's a contact adhesive but I've, I've forced that into there and then I've taped over it whilst it's still wet so all of that should be good. I guess you could use self amalgamating tape, but I've always used this Evo stick and it's, it, it, it served me well. And again, down here, I've soldered uh, the end of the coax onto this copper pipe. Um, and I use these materials because they have what I've got. Uh, this is a, a, a plastic water pipe that force fits into this copper tube and then this is the other part of the uh, gamma and that, that little bit of tape is just marking it. So this forms a capacitor and then uh, tuning that is uh, this little strap here. Again, I, I use copper because it was what I'd got at the time. So um, I've just put some tape on there because these are set uh, the tuning of the of the uh, antenna and uh, uh, is set um, by uh, by this rod and the amount of engagement of this capacitor these two pipes uh, make a capacitor and that's a dielectric of course I say so this is all a very tight fit so there's no water can get in there and, and change it so what I'm going to do is uh, open these up have a look see what state they're in and um, uh, I'm going to put some lithium grease on them and I shall probably grease this up as well. By the way, I've uh, clamped uh, these components uh, rather than uh, drill through here because I could have drilled uh, and tapped that or put a bolt through there. But if you drill uh, this, uh, this element, uh, you weaken it as it flaps about in the wind. There's a good chance that it will break. Um, 
Now, I'll be able to slide the bottom one off. But, so, look at that. That's You're seeing that as I'm seeing it. Um, yeah, there's, you can see that's, that's still good. Uh, which is not bad. That's two years out in uh, all weathers. And hopefully I'm getting that one in shot. Can't see. Uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's, that's adequate. But I'm going to clean that up with some wire wool. I'm going to have to open that, unfortunately. There. Slide that off. Um, so, inside, you can see there's... Uh, just a little bit of, uh, of, of the, the Vaseline that I put in there two years ago. Um, but that's, that stayed good. Without the Vaseline in it, of course, it would all look, uh, it would look like this. Hopefully I'm getting this in shot. Yes, that's a uh, Gamma Match. And, or the, the Gamma Match capacitor. And I've actually got uh, Eight and one eighth of an inch. Uh, eight and one eighth inches engaged, or if you uh, if you like, uh, two hundred and five millimeters, and that just fits in there. That's, that's a good tight fit, and there's there's no sign of, that moisture's been in there. So that's the sort of quantity of grease that I've put on, it's just a smear and I put that on each surface and uh, I'll also do that um, uh, on, the, on this joint up here. Well just so that there's no misunderstanding at all, the only reason for the grease is to repel the rain water. Uh, it's got nothing to do with, um, you know, needing anything to be lubricated. It's simply to stop uh, the the action of the rain and the salt. And uh, I say, I've always used petroleum jelly, you know, Vaseline, uh, on these joints previously. But I just thought I'd try uh, this lithium grease, uh, what I bought for my strimmer. And... Um, Anyway, so I uh, just thought I'd mention that. where I guess there's sort of micro cavities in there but uh, that's essentially clean and bright and very, very sticky you can see there's a bit of corrosion there where obviously something has been able to get in there a bit of moisture has been able to get in but in the main it's uh, it's still it's still bright um, so that's that's two years of uh, uh, salt air and boy, you wouldn't believe how corrosive this salt is. Um, uh, any uh, mild steel items left out here just get ravished. It's, it's, it's fantastic how it uh, uh, damages stuff. Uh, unbelievable. I may even make a, a video uh, about uh, the corrosion. Probably similar to a lot of uh, radio hams in as much as uh, I can go for months uh, at a time without operating uh, the ham radio um, uh, and quite happily come back to it at some uh, 
some later date and um, I, I, I love the hobby and I met some very interesting people but um, I, uh, I had a, a contact uh, from uh, Rick McWhirter uh, All American 5 Radio and he was uh, suggesting that I might like to have a QSO with uh, one of his colleagues and uh, so I thought I'd better blow the cobwebs off here and make sure this is uh, okay because this is my only directional antenna uh, my other uh, antennas are inverted V's and uh, they're not pointing uh, at the states so uh, that's uh, why I thought I'd better just tidy this up and make sure it's okay and uh, see if I can fulfill that request I don't normally work uh, on any schedules as I, I hate having to work to anybody's time scale but uh, seeing as how Rick had uh, made that suggestion I thought I'd follow through. Well that uh, bit of video that you've just seen was made yesterday and I'm glad I got all of the work done outside then because it's a dirty old day today. Um, not too windy, the wind's always blowing here but uh, you can see the, the visibility has dropped down a fair old bit. Um, and uh, oh, that's uh, so that's let's say my um, rotatable aerial, and then up here is my uh, 20 meter beam, well, sorry, 20 meter uh, inverted V, and then that's my 80 meter uh, inverted V, which you've seen before. And uh, I, I use this, um, uh, this beam on high days and holidays so uh, I just pull it out to have a bit of fun with for a say um, uh, I just thought I'd have a look at that and uh, just check it uh, as uh, it's two years since uh, it's uh, been assembled but uh, it works well and I have a bit of fun with it it hasn't got a rotator on it I come out and turn it by hand um, but um, let's think about a rotator at some stage anyway um, it's a little bit of antenna maintenance. Um, hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.